What's up everybody? We are here in Sedona and we are just entering this amazing city. Okay, so I want to show you guys what this place looks like. I'm completely stopped in this traffic for about 20 minutes. And the dude's just really over it. So he got out of the car and he's walking to see what's going on. <laughs> um, so we have no idea why it's closed, but he's gonna go find out. So we're moving and the news is not back. I don't know where he's at. I'm gonna find him on the side of the road here. Oh my gosh. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Did you investigate? I did. I pushed, <laughs> I pushed the energies and we got it going. I walked all the way up here. I was like, this bitch isn't even spawning. That's what it is. And then it finally cleared up. As soon as I started walking up here and reached here, it started uh, going. 11 minutes left. Wow, we've been in the car for five hours. And we are entering this place and it is one of the most beautiful, most majestic, most rocky places rocky. and grounding cities this is a this is a dimensional city this is a dimensional world we're gonna go check in and uh, take some showers and stuff and just relax a little bit continuing the vlog on we continue with the journeys yes. we just came back from dinner we got some vegan pizza it was honestly pretty good yeah it's a good day anything you want to say babe um just be be very attentive to conversations around you you know when there's strangers around you feeling the need to to speak loud enough so that you can hear sometimes they're sending you signals and messages and triggers and you can either suck yourself into that frequency or you can just realize that people really do work around you sometimes not in your for your own benefit but sometimes not it's not in your greatest favor Yes, that is true. Sometimes it is. So what do is. you do? How do you transmute that? How do you react to that? How do you get yourself back into a state of flow rather than like allowing your frequency to be disturbed? Absolutely. Yeah, there was a lot of traffic stopping going on for no reason. And I got out of the car to see as we were coming into Arizona what's going on with all the traffic. And the funniest thing was that they were all just basically parked in their cars <laughs> sitting still. Not driving. For like a quarter of a while. <clears throat> it's like one thing to be in traffic because there's no space because there's so many cars. It's another thing for everyone to just be sitting there in the same spot, not moving, in order to just delay the source players that are trying to experience a higher frequency. And what happens with that is that what happens to the source player sometimes, guess what? We give in. We get frustrated. We give into the energy that's trying to frustrate us. Right. We don't allow ourselves to be in the moment. And we get sucked into that reality by NPCs being manipulated by the machine to allow the energy flow to just weaken. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So the lesson here, as it really goes right in front of us, I'm just going to go ahead because he should have been waiting his turn. The lesson here is to realize that these people are crazy. <laughs> and we should not care what it is that they do. We should be unperturbed. There is a section in a book by this author. His name is Coach Corey Wayne. He's a really dope guy. Okay, we had to switch phones momentarily, but the vlog will keep going because nothing can stop the TMU energies. That is for sure. As I was saying, there is... Yeah, there is... um. An author, his name is Coach Corey White, and he talks about, one of his books is called Mastering Yourself, and he talks about being unperturbable, meaning you cannot be affected by outside circumstances, events, energies, frequencies. He's a, he's a dating, relationship, and life coach. Okay. He's a dope guy. So, learning how to be unperturbable, not being affected by your environment, being the dictator of your environment, being the controller of the frequencies that are around you, is the essence of being a mage or mystical adept wow. or spiritual being because you are the transmuter 
as Leslie learned tonight, where a woman was constantly aggravating her by talking about these programs. You want to talk about which one it was? Um, she talked about quite a few. One and of them was the money one. We should bring that one. Oh yeah, one of them was about financials. She was just saying how it doesn't. She was just basically saying how she was, you know, struggling. Okay, the first one that started actually was. Oh, I needed this. I needed this vacation just to get away for a couple days right, and just right. recharge. And then I realized, why would we ever want to live our lives just to have one or two days where we feel we can escape our prison and be in a place that brings us some peace of mind? Mm -hmm. That is not a life I ever want to be a part of. Nope. And it's the life that most of us live because we've been programmed to believe that, you know, to feel free and to feel peace and to feel like we're on vacation is something that comes rarely to us Absolutely. because we're enslaved to our jobs and our obligations that we signed off to and that is why i talk so much about life purpose yep. so in everything that i talk about spiritually mm -hmm. because life purpose teaches you how to work for something and to serve your purpose for a greater reason which is your own internal satisfaction your own internal sense of well-being you're not focusing on the external world and its rewards and what it's giving to you Even you are that's a program that's right. a program to try that is an attachment that, that is a desire that I is the essence this. of desire buddha said desire is the root of all suffering we've been feeling very creative so we've just been kind of just in a creative flow and this has been part of the creation creation is when you create just for the simple desire to create and to express mm -hmm. that is the truest most ultimate form of liberation. If you're creating because it's your job or something, you know, it's it's one thing if it's your life purpose, it's another thing if it's your obligation. So we are here and as free soul beings. It's about being in the flow state to create and express at the same time, to learn, to teach, to see the lessons, to shadow work, to burn away all that no longer serves you, all at the same time. And, mm -hmm. and while it's happening, express it authentically, like no fears, no questions. No just hesitations. No hesitations. Just let it be. So, yeah. Sedona's been interesting. We are going to explore the rest of Sedona tonight and uh, just, you know, enjoy ourselves. Greetings and welcome back. We are here in Sedona. Me and Les. Lee. And we're about to go to the cafe. We're loving Sedona's energies for sure. So we're going to get some coffee. It's like 9.30 in the morning. And we're gonna do some work. We're gonna do some write some emails. She's gonna work on her course for the School of Mysticism. And uh, we're really excited to just have a good day today. Hey, looking so good. We got some avocado and some tofu scramble and this really good coffee. She got the same thing, of course. So, like, they need to be aware that money is directly correlated to your life force energy. And if you maintain your life force energy and keep it at the highest possible frequencies, then your money is naturally going to reflect that, especially if you are open to that stream of consciousness and energy flowing through you. What about when people bring up programs like, well, I don't have the education, I wasn't raised in the right communities, well, those or are I have disadvantages? Those are programs, just like you said. So those are belief systems that are keeping you trapped in a lower reality, whereas you need to realize that those are programs that are limiting you and you can do whatever it is you want i mean you basically all you need is a phone and a computer and you can start a business and become extremely prosperous you can make millions of freaking dollars with literally just a smartphone <laughs> if you just know how to and if you just believe in yourself if you, if you, if you put that perspective into reality a lot of it has to do with self-worth almost all of it has to do with self-worth and it has it goes back to self-love because if you don't love yourself you don't believe that you're worthy of enough money and abundance and because you don't love yourself and you don't believe you're worthy you will naturally always repel the abundance that's coming to you you won't believe that you're really worthy you, you believe you have to struggle and work so hard because you're worth nothing because you believe you're worth nothing so the first thing would be to sit with yourself stop doing stuff in the external world okay sit with yourself and heal yourself and make yourself in love with yourself which is very hard at first but you have to accept yourself you have to get to a point where you can generate self-love and then you have to look at your life and see where is my value not being appreciated 
where am I putting my energy? Is it this job that's only paying me $8 an hour or $16 an hour, whatever it is, that's not really valuing my energy and my time, and they're taking more than I'm giving or that I'm getting? So if I'm not being valued there, I'm gonna have to shift my spot, my reality. So once you've done that self-work, and you see, okay, I am valuable, I'm, I'm loving, you know? Then you see, okay, I'm worth this much. Then you have to align yourself with your life purpose. And as you do that, you start to realize what's really important and that money is just a byproduct of your natural abundance. You are abundant as a being. All right, we are here in Sedona. We are at the Red Rocks and we are hiking at the moment and it is so incredible. Like I have not seen anything this naturally beautiful in a long time. Let me check that out right there. So we are still here in the Red Rocks in Sedona and we have experienced energies full on. And I want to talk to you guys about it for a minute and some lessons that I picked up from being in this space. Okay, so here's the deal. A lot of people talk about Sedona as um, a very high vibrational spot and it is very high vibrational. Um, the energy here is extremely powerful and when we got here I felt a lot of clarity, a lot of groundedness, a lot of presence and it immediately brought to my attention certain emotions and energies that were acting unconscious within my mind. So if you come here you will experience that clarity of thought. And here's the thing, it's not an upward energy whereas it's in your crown chakra or your third eye, okay? This is an energy that's coming from your root chakra. So this is a place where you come to get very grounded, very present with who you are in this moment and how you can be clearly established on your mission in earth, okay? And who your identity is and how you can stay grounded into that experience. Now, one thing that I thought was very interesting is that there are the sinkholes or I guess you could call it like vibrational um, vortexes, energy vortexes, and so there's an energy vortex that runs all the way down here, and it basically just sucks and pulls all the energy deep into that spot down there. Um, and we felt it, okay? We felt s some of our stuff even fall and go down as like an offering, which was an accident. It wasn't mine, it was hers. But <laughs> So we saw some of the stuff fall into the vortex, and we could feel, yeah, her bracelet fell. And we, we could feel intensity of the energy that was pulling towards it. So um, be aware that these spots are very high vibrational and you have to come in with respect. That was the first thing. When we came in here, we were a little bit erratic, a little bit loud and um, crazy in our vibration, right? You know how it is in the modern world, you're very like ungrounded. And as we've sat here and connected and meditated, We've gotten a lot more grounded, a lot more centered, a lot more in resonance with the space. So if you come to Sedona, make sure that you come in respectfully and you honor the energies because they are very high vibrational and they will kick you out if your frequency is not high enough, okay? You will, you will stick out like a sore thumb if you're a low vibrational energy in here, okay? Because this place is already anchored into the 5D earth. It's already become a hyper-dimensional reality and the physical reality represents that space so you need to align yourself and um, it feels good because I can tell that there was all kinds of supernatural uh, supernatural and mystical and, and mythical kind of kinds of things that used to happen with these rocks okay some of these rocks are huge and there's just no way that they were developed by weathering and erosion as they talk about in the modern science. Yeah, that's just nonsense in my opinion Really what's happening is I'm going to take a look, you guys on a little walk as I just explore 
I'll show you guys. Really what's happening is that these rocks were formed through various energy experiments and beings moving throughout the grid. Okay, the world once used to be a lot bigger, a lot more powerful. Magic used to flow a lot more potently. And um, that was something that was known. So a lot of our history has become a straight up lie and a fabrication. And we need to see beyond the illusions, beyond the mayas. One cool thing that I was doing, which I will teach in the school, which I teach in the school, is basically gaining impressions from certain spots. So if I was to come up here and touch this tree with my hand and concentrate my energy with the tree, I could start to see what it sees, what it experiences, what it knows and what's happened to it. And when I was down there by the rocks, which we're gonna show you guys the time-lapse footage, which was super dope, I sat and I touched the rocks in a few of those different spots. It communicated to me, as well as Earth herself, that the energies were pulled in and they were sucked in. And I saw like a vortex go in and the things go, and the, uh, the different um, tectonic plates change as the landscape shifted. So it's so cool. Another thing that was really starting to um, have me experience or I was starting to experience was earth bending or working with the earth's energetic fields and learning how to move those fields, learning how to move the rocks and become one with the rocks. And that is a very advanced ability. That's not easy at all. It takes a lot of practice to meld your consciousness with something so physically based or so dense, right? So that's something I'm experimenting. And that's something I'm looking forward to showing you guys how to do inside the school uh, for, for those that are practicing psychokinesis because it's such a powerful technique. And um, this is a great place to come and train. So I wanna show you guys a little bit more of this place. I do feel the, the magnetic pull. Ooh, look at that, my hand up. Absolutely incredible. A good place to practice aerokinesis. Okay, Eight so days? Babe, I have 10 kappa, 5 pita, 6 vata. Okay. We got miso soup. Miso soup. Miso soup. 
But even though we've been on the road, we've been eating pretty healthy, except last night we had like an impossible burger. Yeah. Which is been, not healthy. We've been eating, you know, this is not my normal diet. I don't eat this this much like outside food. It's yeah. not healthy. It's not good. I'm, but I'm we're trying to keep it healthy. We get everything's gonna be vegan. We got uh, our Thai tea with coconut milk. And we're trying to figure out his dosha. Yes, it looks like I'm a kappa. Mm -hmm. The news, what just happened back there? Right over there. Can you tell? It's way it's so much to share. So much. But we found it at the parking lot at the library. We um <clears throat> we're gonna do some work from there. But we got pulled to come into the space first and we ended up hanging out for like two hours just completely just blasting off. It was amazing. And X marks the spot. That was a synchronicity for us. Um <clears throat> just something that's been coming up, so it definitely did mark this spot. Okay, so we are li we are literally completely geeking out after we have received. I mean, I I I had to stop and really like um <laughs> just <coughs> control the energies that were going on in my body because I was so filled up to to like where it's hard to handle all of that. So. Um, tea helped me a little bit but it's very reminiscent of uh anxiety because anxiety what is anxiety right it's just this energy but it reminded me of when i used to get anxiety attacks and i used to get them so regularly and that's one of the biggest programs that i worked through but i noticed like for me my anxi anxiety was um caused upon my own doing so if you're strong enough to admit that you're causing your own anxiety you know you're at a good place to start your healing um but anyhow, uh, I started feeling that same feeling coming up. Like, oh my God, this is so much energy going on in my body. It's happening. But luckily, thanks to that program, I recognize it's just energy. And you have to let it move through the body. But do you have any advice to you on like making sure when you're like in nature refueling, uh, what to do with the increase of energies in the body and um, coming back into like a dental Do something state. physical. Something physical. Something physical. Go exercise. Go for a walk. Do something creative. Do something not magical. So maybe even just watch a Netflix show, watch a movie, do something creative. But like, what this about right easy. now? I have like a surge of energy. Right, I can see so it. So just it? like breathe. Like so look. when you have the surges of energy, you're gonna have to just ride them. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have to upgrade because your auric field, what's happening is that your, your energy body and your auric field it is gaining more power it's gaining more more consciousness and more 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 potency so with that more consciousness and that potency it it upgrades the amount of storage that it can hold and um initially especially when you're first starting off with energy or when you level up considerably you're gonna freak the fuck out your body's gonna freak the fuck out like i can't tell you how many weird things my body does when it's like leveling up even in fact today my hands this last week uh, or this last couple days my hands the finger pads have been extra sensitive and i think that's because i burned my fingers when i was using electricity like it burned literally from the inside the cells were not equipped to handle so much voltage especially this finger just this finger every other finger was fine they're sensitive but this one <coughs> it got too much current and so it got blasted a little bit so it's gonna be like a little bit of an upgrade um an adjustment period yep. especially when you're really out here and plus she was with me so i was cranking it up like crazy and then she figured out how to crank it up and she figured out how to connect in properly with the sun and once you dial that in uh things get pretty wild so yeah that's all i have to say for now yeah okay let's go so i'm getting good i'm gonna get fiery in this video because i'm, I'm a little bit irritated i don't want to say irritated but like there is power and passion flowing through my words. And so as I was waiting for her to get the Thai food, I'm sitting there, I'm cranking the grid. I'm thinking like, I haven't met a single person in Sedona that knows how to do that. They don't even know that there is a grid. They don't even know that there is a grid, bro. They're too busy worrying about what color bracelet they're wearing and the scarf that they have. Meanwhile, I, I want you to understand, I literally wear a Gymshark, a Gymshark t-shirt because I like to work out, right? So I'll, I'll wear the most simple clothes because I know that my clothing literally has no impact on my energetic signature. 
Almost none. But you know that color does resonate frequencies color, and vibes. Color resonates frequencies and vibes. But when you make your whole appearance... But what if that's part ego, of their ritual, listen, too? Listen. Let me get to it. It's one... Okay, so I understand. You're going to wear certain things to get your vibe and everything. But, like, I want you to understand that none of that shit really matters. But we okay? are living in a physical world, and you need to learn how to master all right. elements of I it. I appreciate you being the counter whatever. Yeah. But let me be real with you, okay? You need to know how to manifest and push light out of your body. That's it, bro. You need to know how to change the grids. It really doesn't matter if you're naked, if you're wearing a sweatshirt, if you're if you are in rags. Okay, but what about the notion that there are different types of star beings and star seeds and like the type of light workers out here, you know, so, and some of them are into shamanic earth type of elements and others are into cosmic and others. Very good, very good. So that is a good point. And so we met with some of these beings that were doing different things. And I was just, I, you know, I was there. I wasn't even there to like connect with the energy uh, too much. I was there to do work. You, well, you, know? you wanted to socialize. Well, too. yeah, I did. But I was there to do work. Is it this one? Oh, uh, yeah, me great. I was there to do work. I was there to um, work on the TMU, the Matrix Unveiled, and uh, get some content up. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was going to go there and then be judged <laughs> for being spiritual or not spiritual enough. And which, that's something that happens in the, in the community. But that's what happens when you gather large groups of people together, no matter, you know, what they're Left. into, um, you're gonna make a, go down over there by the fountain and make a right, right. and then go around the building. Um, that's what happens when you get in any sort of social circle that's a large gathering. You know, it's like you're going to have these feelings of like, oh, I'm not dressed like that. Oh, um, this person seems more eclectic. This person's more this. You're going to get triggered. You're right, going to get fired. Go around and hug so, this area. So here's the thing. I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm, I'm just going to speak on my opinion and my gnosis. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm not saying how to live your life. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying as an observer of truth, knowing what I know, knowing how I know this reality works. And one thing I want to make very clear to everybody that's listening and watching this is that when you are a genuine practitioner and you genuinely have energy and you have a lot of energy, the darkness takes note yep. of that. Yep. And they actually actively pursue yep. to snuff your light out. Yep. But if you are a fake new ager that's doing pretty much nothing, you won't even know that there is darkness. Yeah. You won't even know that there's a darkness that's working against beings. You, it will never actually manifest. It will never even see you as a threat because it's like, oh, that's just a, they're just trapped in the AI program. <laughs> we got them already. We don't need to use more programs for them. We already have them in our little web of deception, which is thinking that you're doing real energy work and real stuff when you're not okay that's why i stress the four elements connection because it's such a tangible way of determining someone's magic levels if i can see how much energy you can push out of your body if you can't push anything out well then that just shows that's your level of knowledge and understanding that's your, your consciousness that's your level of consciousness you have not learned how to manifest yet with your power so we have to realize that there are so many levels to this game and just because somebody doesn't look like they know how the reality works doesn't mean that they don't actually know in fact they may know deeper than you and they may be dressed way more plainly or they could be very eclectic and they know what they're doing and they're dressing like really really exotically but what i've seen is <laughs> exotically the, you know eccentrically what i've seen is genuinely the stupider a person looks in terms of their flamboyancy, the less they really know. Because when you become really dialed in, you really start to realize that materialistic things don't matter. They actually have no impact. Okay? So, let me share a little bit more of what's going on. Because there's, there's some more stuff here. <clears throat> if you're ignoring the darkness, you are ignoring the truth. Okay? That means that you're not actually doing the real work if you're not aware that there's an ai mm -hmm. in the matrix if you're not aware that this is a matrix then you have not tapped in 
You have not broken the code. You have not broken the spell. But You're still under interdimensional control. If you do not realize that there are interdimensionals that are walking around in human suits around you, you are still under the control program. If you do not realize that the government knows this, you are still under the control program. If you do not realize that there is geoengineering that is interdimensional, if you do not realize that this is a multi-dimensional game and that you think that just by doing your vibrations and your ohms and your stretches each day, that that is all you need, you haven't tapped into the real knowledge. You wouldn't be considered a, a, a wizard or a mage or a real practitioner. You would be considered a charlatan, okay? You would be considered somebody that takes someone's money but doesn't have anything to teach them. Especially if you are teaching somebody, which there's so many teachers but none of these teachers can prove any results with their energy. So when I see someone's energy, I'm like, okay, show me a demonstration. If you can astral travel, show me some proof. Show me what you got. Where is the proof? If you really are as connected as you say, there should be a grid reactions everywhere you walk. And she's been with me and she knows Everywhere I walk, the grid is doing something because my signal is pinging out into the ether. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be half asleep. It's still doing it. Whereas I don't see that with a lot of these new agers. I don't see anything. It's, in fact, the grid treats them just like an NPC. And so then the question is, can a lot of these new agers just be NPCs in a different flavor? Probably. <laughs> that this is just another program that's been given by the AI, by the system, to keep you controlled. And I, I'm not the only one that said this. There's other real genuine practitioners. Let me tell, tell you, there are real ones out there that have said the new age is the new cage. It's the new thing that she has created to coddle the souls into coming into a trap. Focusing on manifestation, focusing on belief system, like... These shallow fucking things. When you're really supposed to be focusing on your life force and your connection to the ether, that's all that matters. Stop focusing on manifestation and all of this shallow stuff or your breathwork classes. That's not how you get the results, bro. Drinking a kale smoothie isn't going to give you the results. That's good if you want to be healthy, but that has nothing to do with your energy signature. It's, it's like a very minute amount. Okay? So let's be real here. Let's realize that there are real masters here that really carry light. And there are real charlatans here that really carry bullshit. And we have to know how to distinguish. And if you cannot distinguish, it's because you yourself have not dialed yourself in. So what I recommend to those that are looking to dial themselves in properly is to really realize that nature is your best teacher at this point. Okay? Nature will be the one that will teach you properly and... You need to learn how to utilize nature, how to activate and connect to nature. Nature is not something that you just look at and it's supposed to be pretty, okay? If you just look at it and you're like, oh wow, look at all the pretty colors. Well, you're about as thick as a doorknob, as dense as a, uh, as a doorknob, okay? However that phrase is said. Really, nature is a holographic system that has information streams going in through it and that's all it is. It's a transfer of energy. It's a whole, uh, it's a port that's carrying information. It's like a library and you're pulling information from it. And when you learn how to use this information, you learn how to engineer systems, like entire realities, your engineering systems with specific codes that you put in. So you, you put in a code, the, the airplane flies by you put in another code, the wind activates, you put in another code, the sun turns on, you put in another code, all the NPCs go to sleep. Okay. That is real power. That is real knowledge. You put in a code, you can see your whole auric field. But we don't get taught this stuff. Why are we not being taught this stuff? Why is the spiritual community not focused on this stuff? Why are they focused on all kinds of BS and distractions? Because they don't know. Because they're also part of the program. And uh, the real masters, they, they don't really teach too much. Because they realize most of the people are not really serious. They're not really dedicated. They're not really going to put in the time. They're not going to be there every day 
outside, connecting to the grid, connecting to themselves, connecting to their energy signature, putting in that effort, learning to conjure magic out of their very bodies. Conjure it like your life depended on it. If you were being attacked right now and you needed to defend yourself and all you had was your magic and your energy signature, could you defend yourself? Could you do anything? Or would you just stand there helplessly? What about your life? Because it's the same thing. If you don't control your magic, if you don't have any ability to control magic, how are you going to navigate your life? You think you need to manifest things? That's not how it works, bro. You don't think about stuff and then try to force it to happen. You know that by being in the right frequency, everything gets magnetized to you. Meaning I thought of, okay, I thought of a nice place to stay. We manifested probably the most luxurious place in, in Sedona. Instantly, within like a second. Then I thought of Thai food. We got the best Thai food instantly. And it's not that I'm trying to visualize and put it on my whiteboard and draw it and then recite chants and be like, I'm going to manifest this. I'm going to manifest this. I just need to save up enough energy. No. I focus on the life force that I have. And I, when I am like low on manifestation power, I crank up my life force. And I'm like, let's just charge up. And then everything gets pulled to me. Because I'm the creator. Because you're the creator. And because you are a, like a black hole of energy. And you're generating this place. This is a hologram. And it's been hacked. And we have hackers. And we have hijackers. And we have listeners. And we have programs. And we have dark entities that want to feed off your louche. And we have idiots running around thinking that they know what's going on when they don't. We have beings that are so deeply entrenched in the program that they have created new programs themselves as spiritual teachers thinking that they're helping people and they may be helping people but really they're just it's the blind leading the blind <clears throat> now let me tell you something when you meet me if you meet me in person or whatever or if you interact with me i'll be extremely nice to you i won't say anything to you i won't tell you that you're you're down to deception um and that's because I don't want to come off as a dick. I don't want to have to hurt your feelings and tell you that you're not really doing anything. <laughs> okay? Because that's just not my place. I don't feel that's my place. But in these videos, in my truth, you know, this is where my truth is spread. This is where my vibration is echoed into the ethers. So I want you to realize that there are real light beings that hold light. And I have seen beings myself and I have worked with beings, intelligences that are so far beyond humanity, so far beyond humanity, so far beyond anything that I have ever seen in my life that they are so intelligent that they, it is, it is, it is beyond, I mean, I have no words to describe it. Okay. There has been beings that beings that have shown me how time unravels. Okay. She, there was one being that had shown me, she literally opened her hands and she ripped apart time in front of me. And then she opened space and time at the same time. And then she collapsed it. Time and space. She opened time and space as if it was a file on a filing cabinet. Or if it was a folder on a desktop that you just click and open. She says, oh, that's time. You click on time, you can change the order of time. And then put it any way you want. Do you hear that being talked about in the new age? She says, space? You think space is real? Now, I want you to understand this was all telepathic. She didn't have to use these words that I have to use like a monkey. She just downloaded it all to me in my head within a second. She said, you think space is real? Watch. She went and reached her astral hand through the veil and grabbed something and pulled it to her side and then put it back and moved things around and said, your reality is not real. You're on a hologram. You're on a projection screen. I don't need to be, uh, you don't need to be doing physical things. You need to just sit there and let it come to you. That's real power. That's real knowledge. And then when you see the darkness, you realize that that's training practice. Really is what I treat it is, oh, you're going to push harder against me? Thank you, because I actually needed to stretch my muscles. And you're actually making me way stronger by attacking me or by targeting me or by finding me out. And I appreciate each time you come to me because then I get to wipe you out and get stronger. 
or I have to confront something within me that is a darkness element and then send that out of me. Whatever it is, either way it is, we are doing alchemy. Magic is real and we've only just begun to talk about it. We've only just begun to explain how it really works. And there's a lot of deceptions out there, guys and gals. <clears throat> and I, my sole mission has been, <laughs> it's funny because I had pulled a card, which I never pull cards because it's, it's literally the stupidest thing. You don't need to pull cards to read your frequency. I pulled a card. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I, what I knew. The card said, awaken your divine gifts and practice your abilities. I'm like, I've been doing that for several years. So it knew exactly what I was, but I don't need the card to, to, to verify it, it's not really, it's, it's such a, it's so low on the totem pole is my point in terms of wisdom to use a tarot card and to read frequencies. You want to do it? Be my guest. Is it really necessary? No, <laughs> it, it's not really effective either. So people realize that there's real teachings out there. Realize that the shit that I experience and that I go through on a daily basis could be made into a movie. <laughs> could be made into a movie. It's not just me. It's anybody that's on a really quantum frequency. And I don't use the word quantum as a, in a new age way. I mean quantum in the, in the fact that I see the quantum world with my pineal gland. So then I interact with the quantum world and, and hack it. Okay? And so as I was cranking this grid when I was waiting for her with Thai food, I was getting a little frustrated because I was thinking like, you know, I see so much falseness and they, the new agers, I, I don't really fit in with them. They don't really like me either. I mean, I wouldn't say they don't like me, but I don't fit in with them and they know that and they kind of keep their distance from me. So they'll be really warm and fuzzy to some people, you know, they're really warm and fuzzy to you. But then to me, they don't, they don't really know what to think of me. They kind of look at me they're kind of confused. And that's because I've reached levels and depths in my consciousness that they have not even approached, that they didn't even know were there. And so when they look at me, they may see a 22 year old kid, they may see a child or a, a, you know, a, a young adult, but they have no idea that, <laughs> that the beings that, the being that I am and the beings that I'm connected to are so ancient. We are, we are beyond this universe. This universe is like a freaking USB. And we came from a realm that was a quantum machine. This is just, you know? So, Earth is so interesting. That's what, what I really have to say is, Earth is so interesting and it, it bewilders me because I think so differently from the, the most of the people on Earth. And I I'm sure a lot of people say that. But even in the spiritual community, I don't find too many people that are like me. There are, there are a few and they are my friends. But I will say this. I am, I'm totally open to being friends with everybody. But I'm going to call you out on your BS. And you may not like me for that. You may, you may want to block me. <laughs> you may want to delete me off Instagram, whatever. You may want to just like spread bad things about me. Say that I'm an asshole or that I'm being negative. But I'm just trying to tell you the truth as it is, as I've unveiled the matrix and the matrix is not a fucking pretty place. It's very dark. It's very, very dark. There is a lot of darkness in this realm. The light is strong and we are here, but we must face the darkness. We must actually look at the darkness. That's what the light does. It doesn't go and stay in the light. It goes towards the darkness. It shines its light as powerfully and as bright as possible. And then it directs itself towards the darkness. It actually goes there and it clears it out. And that is one of the, the tasks I heard in my head repeatedly lately. And I'm on the front lines here by putting my soul out there, by putting my physical body and my name and my, ad, you know, all, everything, my whole identity. But I understand what we are, what we are doing here. I understand what this purpose is. This is a serious game we are playing. This is a serious mission. And so I have a lot of support. I will say that I have a lot of astral, energetic, multidimensional support. They really manifest themselves. They really make themselves known. 
anybody that's around me for a minute will feel it. They will feel that light presence that is literally like a God presence that will work through beings to make my life as easy as possible. Because the shit that I have to do is on a different level, dimensionally. So I need my physical existence to be as effortless as possible because if it's not, I cannot do that higher level work, which is extremely tiring and taxing on my energy and my body. So, um, we must look at the, we must look at the darkness. We must confront the darkness. We must be authentic with ourselves. I love you so much. I'll talk to you later. physical implications of the machine and understanding what this machine like